This is my Sloan Chase 5.5 inch lathe that I recently acquired. It has the maker's mark stamp or the cast into the casting and the 5.5 inch designation as well. This is a lathe that turned out to be in very good condition, rather to my surprise. The general condition looked much like this all over um, and the first thing that alerted me to the, to the fact that it might be quite good was the bearings appear to be pretty near perfect, which is a very good sign. It also comes with the threading attachment, which is fairly unusual, and I was pleased to get that. I've cleaned up two parts, or three parts of the lathe. I've cleaned up the threading uh, plate, which I will do a video of separately. Um, this is quite an unusual piece of kit, and I haven't yet fully worked out how I'm supposed to use it. But um, it's rather surprisingly got a second slide underneath the main top slide, and I'll show that in operation later. This is the cross slide, and frankly I don't think I could have wished for anything better in terms of condition. You can still see all of the, as my German friends would say, fish scales, the, the scraping decorative scraping over the top of this and on this side as well I get the angle right quite difficult to sort out but anyway yes that is in remarkable condition the um, <coughs> the cross slide threads are just a plain screw thread and there's very little back play um, everything is extremely tight, rather to my surprise when I got it all clean and put back together again. Uh, the um, gib screws, or the gib plates rather, are tight, well were tight up against um, the machine housing so they obviously haven't been adjusted at all in their life probably. Uh, I'm just wondering whether this lathe was ever used much at all. Um, the only thing that was a little awkward to do was sorting out the tailstock, which is now perfect. The only issue is it's got a proprietary um, Morse taper inside it, and I'm going to take the barrel out and remachine it and put a, a Morse taper one in it. Um, but apart from that, it's it's satisfactory. So this looks to be quite a nice little lathe when I get it running. Um, I've got a motor to sort out for it and I'll probably put something up here behind it um, and run it with a belt and a variable speed. So that's where I'm at now. Um, I've done about three days work just tidying up and getting everything oiled and cleaned and working. So now I can start to uh, get everything mechanically as good as I can get it before I then strip it down and paint it. But the odds look pretty good that it's going to turn out to be excellent. I've removed the cross side now from the lathe and put it on the table here and I shall have to and play around a little bit with the light so you can see which surfaces have been scraped uh, as originally done in the factory and um, what the state of cleaning up is at now. This is the plate that sits on top of the lathe bed and there's a pull down bolt that sits on the two V's there on the lathe bed. And that's the handle for the pull down and um, the nut that, go, that goes on the underneath. Now to play with this a little bit you should be able to see this glistening with original um, scraper marks both the underlying ones and the final overall scraper marks. 
don't think you could wish for anything nearer the original than that. There's a couple of brighter spots where I've just cleaned up where there were burrs. And that's really pretty good. So nothing needed to be done to that other than clean it. And now I'll just disassemble the cross slide. And we can look at each part as I got that far. On the underneath of the cross slide is uh, the, the uh, part that fits into this. So that goes up and around. And you can see there's a uh, a beautifully scraped plate here on the bottom which matches with the plate on the top of the pull down plate and that's all as originally scraped in at the factory and you can also see plenty of scraper marks all as original on this surface so if I just pull this off now um, we can take that out of the way. Now on this part of the cross slide, um, the bearing surfaces are on the underneath here of the, of the V-ways, on the side of the V-ways and on here on that shoulder. So it's very much like the rivet lay, it's exactly the same arrangement. It's a very old-fashioned arrangement because it's very expensive to produce and um, uh, doesn't seem to be any particular advantage to doing it that way. But again, beautifully done. Uh, you couldn't get a factory to do this these days, besides which nobody knows how to do scraping anymore. And that block is just magnificent. Not quite sure how that will show up. Oh, yes, it does show up quite well. Absolutely glistening with the original scraper marks. So that has hardly been used. And you can see the way that they did this is a very sharp angle on the dovetail and a, an absolutely arrow point on the edge there. So it bearing surfaces are in here, 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 and on the dovetails. Absolutely brilliant. I think that's a superb piece of machinery. Now, I was alerted to how good this condition this was in. Before I'd done any cleaning, I took the two screws out of here. Of course, I never didn't know how to disassemble any of this when I first got it, as I've got no manual. If so we take that off, a very nicely tight fitting spigot, and again on the underside of here, you can probably, yes you can make out all of the scraper marks on there. And um, on this part here, And these two part, little um, nuts here are free to revolve and they are inserted through the slot from below. Um, that's quite a novel way of doing this. So I've cleaned that up as, as much as I'm going to. You can still see the original scraper marks over here but where it was a bit rusty at this end it's lost some of the surface finish. Which is a shame, but in mind. So that's that part. Now this is unusual. If you haven't seen a lathe from uh, First World War era, a lot of them, my rivet included, are made exactly the same way. 
with a block that runs up and down here. And it takes a little while to figure out how to take this apart because there are no nuts, no bolts, no nothing visible anywhere. And in fact, on this particular lathe, you have to find inside here, at the end of the shaft, there's a little slot. And the slot enables you to get a screwdriver in to, if you can, I can do this one handed, to unscrew the uh, end nut on the cross slide, top slide feed screw. And this nut is now off and that has a tiny slit in it just big enough to put a screwdriver in and the theory is it stops it revolving but it's very really fiddly to do and I can now take the screw out right out. That is the top slide and then the underneath here there are two screws here. Which have to come out and one on the other side so let's take those off there. And this has a plate that comes apart here, there it can. And this is all extremely tight. So I move that back out of the way. Then lo and behold, out of oh, sorry, I've got the wrong side. It's the other side it comes out of. And um, this can now be fully taken apart. Let's take that off. And that's nothing much to see on there, except obviously the scraping marks. That is the bearing surface for the other end of this. And there's a pin which engages pin inside here. That won't be visible, I don't suppose. That goes onto that slot that's in there. There we are, like that. And with it, with it in that slot, that then gives the bearing surface at this end inside the casting and at this end inside the casting of two cone shapes which is actually quite efficient. The screw thread is um, 0 0.05 that of an inch. Um, it's perhaps one advantage of using a fairly fine screw thread uh, because um, it means that the adjustment is much more 
um, fine than it is on the rivet, for example, where it's uh, one point one of an inch for each revolution. Um, but it's a bigger thread. So anyway, that is that in its constituent parts, and you can see it's a little bit fiddly to get apart, um, and it helps having already taken the rivet bay apart, knowing how that works. Um, but again, without a manual, it's, it has been proved slightly awkward, but never mind, I've got there. Um, and you can see the cone-shaped bearing on this end. Still remains of the grease in places. You can see the little brown. I just chip a bit off the see that that comes off. Yeah, like that. So that shows that there's the original packing grease never never taken off. Unbelievable, really. So that's the cross slide. I'll now reassemble it um, and uh, put it back on the lathe, and we'll have a look at the tailstock. I've now reassembled everything and um, adjusted the backlash. Everything seems to be fine. Now the only thing I haven't mentioned is that the gib screws need no adjustment at all, which shows how tight this is um, from when it was first assembled in the factory. If, if I tighten the, the gib screws to the point where they're actually touching the, the plate, uh, then, then it's too tight. Uh, the one thing is that these screws are extremely hard um, and I found I couldn't recut or cut the um, screw depth, they're a little bit shallow on the amount of um, slot that's in them. So what I did in the end was to let them down to blue um, and then I was able to, uh, to uh, use my fret saw um, and a fret saw blade just to deepen them a little bit. They're still very hard, but they're uh, adequate, um, even though I've let them down a little bit. Um, and probably the only remaining thing that's slightly critical of the whole thing, these two screws here stop this twisting round, and it just requires these to be really tightened quite hard. They're unlikely to burr because they're so hard, um, and I'm a bit reluctant to let them down to blue and then um, saw out the slots a little bit more. But all told, a um, very nice assembly and very similar to the one that's on the rivet lathe. Okay.